Hi folks, and welcome back. Today we are doing your favorite, my... I like it. We're doing Curse City Speed Painting. Today we're going to be painting Gorslav the Gravekeeper. This is actually one of the models that convinced me to buy this set in the first place. I know that Warhammer Games Workshop has a lot of sets out there like this, you know, Silver Tower, Blackstone Fortress, all that stuff, and I haven't purchased any of those. But some of the models in this, like Gorslav, are just so fun. He has this excellent, like, Silent Hill horror vibe that I really love. And he's, he's got this hook and shovel, and it looks like he's just, you know, trundling through graveyards, hooking open these old coffins, and adding to the undead army manually, piece by piece. It's just so gross and so awesome. I love it. So that's what's on the table for today. Let's get started. We are starting our slap chop process, as always, with a black prime and a healthy dry brush of gray. I used Chaos Black Primer and Dungeon Gray, but whatever you have on hand is fine for this. Once the gray is dry, then it's time to do a lighter dry brush of white. This time I used Pure White from Reaper, but again, there's no wrong color. It doesn't even have to be white if you're looking to add a different undertone to your paint scheme. These highlights give us the base for the translucent paints we'll be using in the next step. And it's at this point I realized that I forgot to create a base for this model, which in this series I normally do before I prime. It's... it's fine. This is fine. But realistically, mistakes happen. All that matters is how you fix them. So I'll apply the texture paste now and let it dry while we move on with the rest of the model. I'm going to be mixing my own flesh tone for Gorslav from Plaguebearer Green, Basilicanum Grey, and Contrast Medium. All three get mixed in equal parts to make a desaturated, deathly skin tone. I apply this to all of the exposed flesh. Now, Gorslav is going shirtless to show off that shredded 0% body fat corpse man physique, so there's a lot of flesh to work with. I'm going to come back in later and highlight up from here. Like with the previous models, I've chosen one detail to bring more attention to, and in this case, it's Gorslav's skin. So make sure to get all the patches of skin exposed through his torn clothes, too. Though it might seem counterintuitive on such a grim dark model, I'm going to bring in some color by using Sigvald Burgundy and Luxion Purple on his skirts. One reason is that I don't want the whole model to be drab, but also, combined with the green in his skin, that gives him a subtle but classic green and purple color scheme, which is commonly used to signal villainy. If you're a comic fan, think Lex Luthor, or the Joker, Green Goblin, Kang the Conqueror, Galactus, Mysterio, um, the Riddler, the Lizard, Prowler, Brainiac, uh, everyone, it's, it's everyone. Now with the skin dry, it's time to do the highlights. As you can see, the slap chop method has already given us a great map of the highest points on the skin, so I take some basic white acrylic paint and mix a bit of the custom made skin tone into it. Then I just carefully apply it to all of the brightest spots on his flesh, careful to avoid the shadows. This process can be slow, uh, but I actually find painting skin very fun. The simple shapes and the volumetric highlights are great practice, and it's actually very easy to get a nice result once you know the process. But if you're not there yet, that's alright. Just take your time, make sure to use a brush with a fine point, that your paint is thinned with water, and that you don't have too much paint in the bristles at once. The next step is a simple wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. I don't apply this to the whole model because I don't want Gorslav to look like he's alive. I just apply it to any spots that look like old wounds, or in the deepest recesses of his stomach as if old, coagulated blood has settled there. 
Well, I have the washes out, I used Targar Rage Shade, which is still a very dumb name, to deepen the shadows on both skirts. These do get an all over wash, though be careful not to let it pool anywhere you don't want it to. Then it's Garagax Sewer Contrast Paint for all the wooden elements. You don't have to worry if you get some of this on the metal parts of the shovel, but do be careful around Gorslav's flesh since it's already finished. I also add some indistinct greys and browns to the stumps and mud that are sculpted on the base. For speed painting, I really just want details like that to blend into the background anyway. Gorslav's undead Pope hat gets a nice simple coat of skeleton horde, as do uh, Yorick and Murray, the two skulls on his shoulders. I also use Templar black to very roughly block in all of the leather details, his belt, his shoes, the straps on his head, and I make sure to do this part completely out of focus so that all the footage is useless. Anyway, alright this seems like a good time to interrupt and say that I am going to keep doing these Cursed City videos, so if there are particular models, particular, can you imagine how good this channel would be if I could speak? If there are particular models that you want to see done next, just hit me in the comments, let me know, and I'll just I'll move them up the list because it's kind of all the same to me at this point. I just want to get through the set, so let me know what you'd like to see done next. Finally, it's time for the metallics. I know a lot of people would go grimdark on this, but I couldn't help thinking it could still use more contrast, so I went with a bright aluminum from Vallejo. All the metallics get a coat in this, and afterwards the majority of them get a wash in known oil, but there's, there's one exception. Alright, we, we've got to talk about this shovel before we go any further. This is the most over-the-top grave digging shovel that has ever existed. It really only leaves three possibilities in my mind. One, this is a magic artifact. He's using it in the process of helping to reanimate the dead. It's got some kind of inherent power that's helping him do this. Two, it's some kind of symbol of office given to him by Radicar, you know? Sort of like, I ah, the Royal Gravedigger or, or whatever. It's a symbol of office as being part of Radicar's undead army, one of his generals. Three, Gorslav's a drama queen. Any regular shovel just won't do it for him. He's got to have the most blinged out shovel in existence because he's Gorslav. We're going to be going with, with number one. We're, we're painting it like a magic artifact. And so our magic corpse shovel gets a coat of Pilar Glacier. It's not a very strong effect, I admit, but I, I do think it helps with at least my own personal headcanon that Gorslav is not just the world's most fabulous gravekeeper. And that brings us to our finished model. Okay guys, that about wraps it up for Gorslav. I had a lot of fun painting this one. I may actually come back later and uh, add a few extra steps to him, some highlights on some other pieces, bring things up a notch on those ragged skirts he's wearing, things like that. Let me know if you think that would be an interesting video. And also let me know if there is a specific next model from the Cursed City set that you would like to see done next. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep working my way through the box. Alright, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you on the next one.